technology and livelihood education, food processing, exploratory course for grade 7 and 8, module 2, part 2. Based on most essential learning competencies. How to use pressure cooker in food preservation. First, place one and a half inch water in the cooker. Second, put a rack with a stand at the bottom of the cooker. A rack can be old bottles or milk cans of the same height filled with water. Number three, place the packed glass jars on the rack in the cooker. Number four, put on the cover of the cooker. Be sure the cover arrow aligns with line mark on rim of the body of the cooker. Number 5, tighten two opposite bake light wing nuts or knobs at the same time evenly. Never tighten one wing nut or knob at a time. Number 6, turn on the stove. The water in the cooker begins to boil at 212 Fahrenheit or 100 degrees Celsius at sea level forming steam. The steam drives out the air through the bent pipe and heat begins to penetrate the glass jars. Number 7. Exhaust the air in the cooker for 8 to 10 minutes so that the air cannot interfere with the passage of heat. Number 8. Close the bent pipe by putting the pressure regulator weight. The whole of the pressure regulator weight should correspond to the desired pressure directly over the bent pipe. For instance, if the desired pressure is 10 pounds, so the pressure regulator weight hole of 10 be inserted over the bent pipe. Number 9. When bent pipe is closed, the steam can no longer escape so the pressure rises up to the desired pressure. The pressure regulator weight jiggles or rocks when the pressure is reached. This is called coming up time or cut. Water under pressure boils at temperatures above 212 Fahrenheit. At 10 pounds gauge pressure, water boils at 240 Fahrenheit. Then regulate the fire. Number 10. If desired pressure is rich, start counting the processing time. If the processing time is 90 minutes, so maintain the pressure and temperature for 90 minutes. At this stage, heat penetrates the jar by conduction or heat passes from one vibrating molecules to another. It also penetrates by convection in which heated fluids expand, rise, and are replaced by cooker fluids. In other words, heat penetrates the jar by both conduction and convection. Likewise, head space of one half inch of the jar acts as a cushion. In jars, the pressure usually gets so great that most of the air is driven out under the cover. The pressure and temperature in the jar is finally the same with the pressure cooker. Number 11. At the end of the processing time, turn off the stove. Temperature and pressure begins to fall as the cooling off period starts. Wait until the gauge registers to zero pressure and remove the pressure regulator weight. Number 12. Loosen two opposite bake light wing nuts or knobs at the same time. When all wing nuts were loosened, open the cover of the cooker in slanting position away from the base. Number 13. Get immediately the glass jar one at a time from the cooker and close. Invert the glass jars to determine if bubbles continue to flow a sign of good sealing. Number 14. Cool the glass jars in room temperature as well as the cooker. The following are the parts of the pressure cooker. How to care for the pressure cooker? First, wash the pressure cooker if it is already cooled. Second, store the cooker in a dry place. The cover is stored separately from the cooker body. 
Number 3. Be sure the cooker and the cover are thoroughly dried to protect against spitting and corrosion. Number 4. Protect the metal to metal seal from being stuck or dented. Number 5. Protect the metal to metal seal which must be lubricated periodically with Vaseline oil to prevent the cover from scratching and sticking to the bottom. The metal-to-metal -metal seal must not be permitted to become dry as this could result to severe damage to the metal-to-metal -metal seal and make it very difficult to remove the cover. Number 6. Wipe periodically the metal-to-metal -metal seal with clean towel to remove any buildup of foreign materials trapped in the lubricant. Number 7. Avoid hard scrubbing of the metal-to-metal -metal seal to prevent damage. Number 8. The steam pressure gauge should be checked most often for its accuracy. Number 9. To prevent from pitting the cooker, wash, rinse, and dry the cooker thoroughly every use. Do not wash the cooker while it's still hot. Number 10. Place lubricant on the threads of the bake light -like wing nuts or knobs to help the knobs turn more easily and hold the cover securely to the cooker, preventing steam leaks. Number 11. Before using the cooker, hold the cover and bring against the light to see if the bent pipe is clear. If you cannot see the light through the bent pipe, insert carefully a piece of wire in the bent pipe and run it gently in and out to be sure the tube is clear. Rinse the bent pipe with hot water. Number 12. Be sure there is always water in the cooker during canning. If cooker boils dry on the process of canning, never add cold water, only hot water must be added. Do not subject cooker to sudden change of temperature, as this will cause expansion or contraction which can crack a cast aluminum utensil. Number 13. Pressure cooker should never be made more than two-thirds full when cooking foods like arroz caldo with milkfish bone meal. When cooking foods, which will expand, fill cooker one and a half full. Equipment or machine wear and tear. One factor to consider in the selection or purchase of food processing equipment is the construction materials used in manufacturing the equipment or machine, tools or utensils. Food equipment and utensils have food contact and non-food contact surfaces. Food contact surfaces are the parts which normally come in contact with food or from which normally come in contact with food may drain, drip, splash, or spill into or onto a surface that is normally in contact with the food. A non-contact food surface are remaining parts of the surrounding area that should not make contact with the food during the production. The food contact surfaces are usually the parts that undergo wear and tear due to rubbing surfaces which undergoes. The following are the kinds of construction materials for equipment. Number 1. Metals chromium over steel gives an easily cleanable, high luster finish. It is used in toasters and waffle irons. Non-corrosive metals formed by the alloys of iron, nickel, and chromium are also used in the construction of food service equipment. Lead, brass, copper, cadmium, and galvanized metal must not be used as food contact surfaces for equipment, utensils, and containers because they cause chemical poisoning if they come in contact with the food. Number 2. Stainless steel is the most popular materials for food operation. It is commonly used as food containers. It has a highly durable finish with a shiny surface which is easy to clean and maintain. Number 3. Plastic and fiberglass are frequently used in food service equipment because they are durable, inexpensive, and can be molded into different combinations. The following are some examples of plastic used in establishments. Acrylics, it is used to make covers for food containers. 
melamine, it is used for variety of dishes and glassware. Fiberglass, used in boxes, bus trays, and trays. Nylons, used in equipment with moving part. Polyethylene, it is used in storage containers and bowls. Polypropylene, it is used for dishwashing racks. Number 4, Wood. It is a lightweight and economical, but it is also porous to bacteria and moisture, and it absorbs food odors and stains. Wood also wears easily under normal use, which requires frequent maintenance and repair. Wood is used for cutting boards or cutting blocks. Two of the FDA and construction standards from NSF International and Underwriters Laboratory INC for food processing equipment should be easy to assemble and easy to dismantle or disassemble. To ensure that food processing equipment is properly maintained in line with the company or organization maintenance system, the condition of machine parts can easily be detected as to the presence of wear and tear, rocks, leaks, and corrosion. If the parts of equipment are easily to assemble and disassemble, then the condition of machines or equipment can easily be reported as serviceable, repairable, defective, or replaceable. If the parts are easy to assemble and disassemble, it is easy to dismantle the machine parts that breaks down so they can be repaired or replaced right away. Cleaning and sanitizing equipment and instruments. The use of sanitizing agents lead to effective sanitation of tools, equipment, and utensils. Sanitation with the use of physical and chemical sanitizing agents will kill residual microorganisms that remain after cleaning. Cleaning by washing with soap and water is very important as it ensures the removal of dirt or debris by physical or mechanical means. Clean water is to be used to finally wash and rinse all utensils, tools, and equipment. Sanitizing or disinfecting, on the other hand, reads or reduces the number of microorganisms on the surface where food comes in contact with. It cannot be accomplished until surfaces where foods are processed are cleaned. Moreover, it cannot be effective without a good pest control program. Cleaning alone by washing is not capable of totally eradicating microbes, germs, and viruses, hence the need to use sanitizing agent. Some sanitizing agents are detergent solution for scrubbing surfaces or processing tables, 100 to 200 ppm chlorinated water for sanitizing. All tools and utensils are also cleaned and sanitized with the use of detergent solution, rinsed with top water before sanitizing, with 150 to 200 ppm chlorinated water by soaking. Chlorine is one of the cheapest and most effective easily available sanitizers in the market. It is popularly used in the treatment of water for both household and plant. Likewise, chlorine is also used to sanitize processing equipment. The following are the procedure in cleaning equipment and instruments. First, wash all equipment or instrument with soap, then rinse with clean water. Sanitize by dipping into approved sanitizer solution, then remove from the solution and allow to air dry. Procedure in sanitizing. Prepare all the materials needed, then measure a certain amount of chlorine and water, and mix and dip the equipment and instrument in the mixture. Remove the sanitizing solution and dry it thoroughly. Procedure in calibrating. Weighing scale. Check the accuracy. See to it that the hand is pointed at zero in an empty weighing scale. Salinometer. Check the accuracy by measuring 20 of salinometer brine solution. Check if the salinometer records the reading correctly. Refractometer. Place a drop of water, preferably distilled in the dark circular 
or rectangular area and close the cover. A shadow or dark area is visible on the scale inside the eyes piece. Turn the calibration screw until the shadow falls on the zero mark. Open the refractometer cover and dry the cover and the glass prism using soft tissue paper or a cotton cloth. Thermometer Check the accuracy by dipping it in hot food to see if the mercury rises to desired temperature. Proper storing of tools, equipment, and utensils Tools, equipment, and utensils must be properly stored in order to protect them from rusting, contamination, thus lengthen their serviceability. They must be kept in clean cabinets which are well ventilated and not subjected to drops or rains. Tools and utensils which were washed must be drained and wiped dry before keeping them. They are kept in orderly way in order that it will easily to assemble or prepare them when needed. The cabinets or racks where they are kept must be properly labeled for easier identification on the part of the user. Procedure and proper storing of tools, equipment, and utensils. Number 1. Wash the equipment or instrument with soap. Then rinse thoroughly with clean water. Sanitize by dipping or soaking in sanitizing solution. Then rinse with clean water and drain. Dry out thoroughly or air dry. Wipe with a clean piece of cloth. Check the accuracy of the equipment or instrument. Then pack, store, keep in a clean dry cabinet. Procedure and proper storing of tools, equipment, and utensils. Number 1. Wash the equipment or instrument with soap. Then rinse thoroughly with clean water. Sanitize by dipping or soaking in sanitizing solution. Then rinse with clean water and drain. Dry out thoroughly or air dry. Wipe with a clean piece of cloth. Check the accuracy of the equipment or instrument. Then pack, store, Keep in a clean, dry cabinet. Procedures in using standard measuring devices and instruments. First is the salinometer. Prepare brine solution, then pour brine solution in a cylinder. Dip a salinometer in brine solution. Record the reading, then clean instrument after using. Thermometer. Dip the thermometer in boiling liquid. Record the reading by degrees Celsius or Fahrenheit. Clean after using. Refractometer. Place a drop of fresh sap or syrup sample on the refractometer. Close the cover. Quickly read the scale. It is the line on top of the darker area. Glassware like cylinder, beaker, flask. Pour liquid ingredients into the cylinder, beaker, or flask. Then bring the cylinder to eye level. Get the reading at the lower meniscus. Record the reading, then clean after using. Weighing scales. Put the food on the weighing scale. Record the reading in grams or kilograms. Number 6. Measuring cups for dry ingredients. Gently spoon the ingredients into the cup, filling the cup to overflowing. Then level off with metal spatula or straight edge knife. Number 7. Measuring cups for liquid ingredients. Pour liquid on level surface of measuring cups. Have the measuring line at eye level to be sure of the exact measurement. It is important to review all procedures regarding the use of all standard measuring devices to ensure that they will be properly used in accordance with manufacturer's specifications. Being familiar with the procedure in using standard measuring device like salinometer, thermometer, weighing scale, or measuring cup or spoon will enable a food processor to work properly and efficiently.
equipment are the tools, supplies, and other items needed for a particular task. When processing food, there are several equipment that are to be used. These include the followings for cooking equipment like ovens and steams, jacketed kettles, refrigeration and low temperatures, storage equipment like refrigerators and freezers, cutting implements like slicers, mixers, grinders, and choppers. A food processor, however, must know the essential information regarding the equipment in terms of how they are operated or used in accordance with the manufacturer's specifications. Before operating any equipment, it is important to be familiar with the manufacturer's specifications, which includes handling requirement, operating requirements, discharge label, reporting, testing, positioning, and refilling. A time to remember. This is Mylene Huliganga. Thank you for watching.